I am Dr. Nancy Leibowitz, an Upper East Side gynecologist, here today to speak to you about something very important for perimenopausal and menopausal women, testosterone replacement, which is often neglected in typical run-of-the-mill estrogen and progesterone replacement. Now I want to speak to you a little bit about testosterone and what type of hormone it is and what it can do for you. Basically it is the first hormone to go even before you've gone through menopause and it is responsible for your libido, your feeling of well-being. When it starts to diminish, you start to lose bone, you start to lose any kind of connective tissue. You also get less energy, brain fog, and patients who suffer from depression and anxiety, that can intensify. For those who are on SSRIs, this is particularly important because serotonin levels start to fall when hormones diminish as well, particularly testosterone. Now, testosterone is a hormone that has a short half-life. Why is this important? Well, the best delivery methods are those that are not oral. And I won't get into complicated biochemistry, but when you take testosterone orally, it is converted to bad metabolites through the liver. So we want a delivery system that bypasses that. There are other methods sublingually under the tongue or creams which are placed on the skin or the pellet insertion, which is really the preferred method of delivery. And I will get to that in a minute. The problem with creams and sublingually is that because of the short half-life, you place it on your skin or under your tongue and you get a large spike. Then it rapidly declines because it's metabolized quickly. Why is that not good? Well, first of all, when you get the spike, you get increased side effects, such as anxiety. If, yes, if you have too much testosterone, you get anxious. If you have too much testosterone, you get excess hair growth. And if you have too much testosterone, you can get acne. So we'd, we'd like to avoid those side effects. You can also get quite aggressive. Uh, when it falls, then you start feeling worse again. So we want a more steady delivery system. This is where the pellets come in and why they're so important. And I wanna show you what one looks like. It's about the size of a grain of rice, very, very tiny. So you can see that. And it is actually inserted in the hip. We give a little Novocaine and then I make a teensy, teensy, tiny incision, about a millimeter or two, a couple of millimeters. Doesn't even need a stitch. We use what's called a trocar. It's like a straw. And we twist it gently, you don't feel anything, into what we call the subcutaneous tissue or fatty tissue of your hip. And we thread the pellet in, a pellet or two, depending on the dosage. And then we just tape it up. And in about three days, you remove the bandage and the pellet stays in there. Over the next week, blood vessels grow into it and it's much more physiologic. It works almost like the ovary. What happens is when you exercise or run or do anything, your blood flow increases to that pellet, increasing your levels of testosterone. And when you're at rest, less blood flow, less testosterone secreted into your bloodstream. So it's much more physiologic and it's much more of a smooth, constant, secretion into the bloodstream. On average, it lasts for about four months. It's used up and then we insert another one. Now, I have done this on almost a thousand patients for many, many years. I myself am a pellet user. Every four months for the last eight years, I'm 58 years old. And there is no question that it does all the things that I said it does. And I'll, we'll get into some other things. It also increases hair growth in the right places. This is all my hair, not extensions. Too low a testosterone and your hair falls out too high and it falls out. You wanna be in range. We initially figure out the dosage based on your weight, your age, and your symptoms. Three weeks after you go for a blood test to make sure you are in range, we couple that with your response clinically. We also do a thyroid test because I found that Many women are underdiagnosed in the perimenopausal and menopausal time with hypothyroidism. And in order to feel good, you also need your thyroid hormones in range as well. Uh, testosterone also treats mild to moderate hot flashes. 
for patients who have intractable hot flashes, yes, we do use a little bit of estrogen cream. There are estrogen pellets, but over time I found that they cause uterine polyps, increased bleeding. I do not like to use them for that reason. A cream is sufficient because estrogen has a very long half-life. Now, a quick thing about estrogen. You don't need it, okay? You do not need it unless you have intractable hot flashes or small amounts for vaginal dryness. But you should understand that long-term estrogen does not increase the risk of breast cancer until after about 15 years. Uh, the Women's Health Initiative study that was done showed that it was synthetic progesterone that caused the increase in breast cancer. Bioidentical progesterone does not. Bioidentical progesterone is too large a molecule to make into a pellet. But creams can be very, very helpful for helping a patient sleep and easing anxiety at night as well. I often give that with testosterone. I avoid estrogen unless a little bit of vaginal estrogen, like I said, for vaginal dryness or for intractable hot flashes. So I just want to say that I, as a pellet user, have found it to be phenomenal. I have a high retention rate. Patients enjoy it and feel much better, have been frustrated by not being given testosterone and properly. If you would like any more information regarding testosterone pellets, please feel free to go to my website at Dr. Nancy. Thank you, and if you have any further questions, I think you should go to my website at www.drnancylebowitz.com, D-R-N-A-N-C-Y-L-E-B-O-W-I-T-Z.com. And my phone number is on that website. If you'd like more information, feel free to call our office. Thank you.